I went uh, paddling yesterday and it was lovely. And as I paddled back, I noticed in this lake, one of many lakes in Maryland, um, all of which are human made with damming, uh, the blue green algae uh, concern that's uh, kind of a big deal in the East Coast. So, microcysteine is a chemical byproduct of uh, some blue green algae that possibly are offset in terms of their numbers um, by farming practices, nitrogen runoff, and that sort of thing. Um, so, what I chose today, since it's another warm day here in Maryland, is rather than go to the lake where it, you know there was a lot of greenery <laughs> I went to the river this is kind of just behind my house and uh, I'm going to do a little river surfing something about floating on water you get that sometimes or you're like you know I kind of like floating on water Isn't the essential human a little weird, a little bizarre? I mean, look at our history. Look at all the places the human mind has taken us. Look at all the amazing experiences that the human mind has opened up. You know, when you do a base jump or launch paragliding site for the first time, or to climb a new route on a mountain, they say you opened it up. You created a possibility through demonstrating that it could be done. And at first, you didn't know if it could be done. <laughs> right? You didn't know if it was true. But you were willing to give it a go. To risk it for fun. It's a pretty cool kind of courage, isn't it? Sometimes you're risking your reputation. Sometimes you're risking ridicule. Sometimes you're risking your money. Sometimes you're risking your life. Sometimes you're just risking a twisted ankle. The failure to try, that's a different kind of risk. Because you're risking that doing nothing will be enough to keep you alive. And that might work for a while to go on screensaver mode. <laughs> but what if down the road you realize that it's not enough to just get by in this world. It's not enough to just be middle, basic, plain it safe. Is that really enough for you to get through your life with a spring in your step? Where you need that spark to get you through a dark time? Will you have the memories that you built up through your own experiences and your own heroic courage, your spirit of adventure? Will you have those memories stored up to get you through your foxhole moment, your dark night of the soul? Some yes. Some know.
Those who have not risked have not lived fully. They've stayed alive. They've managed to keep the cells of their body operating more or less and the heart beating and all that. But just breathing alone is not proof of life. I think laughter is a better measure. A twinkle in your eye, that's a better measure. A sparkle in your aura, if <laughs> you believe in such things. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. But your emanation, your colors, it's a barrier. Your colors that you send out into the world are dependent upon your dreams and how brave you are in making your brave dreams come true. <laughs> your willingness to see what around the corner. To see what is possible. Because if you believe in your dream, it's real. And if you can make that reality something that others see and feel, and believe in too. Now that steps it up. Some say that if you can touch, move, and inspire other people about your vision, your dream of possibility becomes more crystallized, more solidified, more anchored between the ether and the matter. It's like building a bridge when we have cooperative dreams. It's building a bridge between your intended experience and you actually having it. I think there's a creative aspect of adventure that really does require us to just explore, find out. Maybe what you're gonna experience, not what you thought. Isn't that wonderful? And your experiences will be new. And you'll get a chance to break new ground in the universe. <laughs> you want to be meaningful in this amazing world. I do believe that you have to do something new. You gotta risk that awkward feeling. You're gonna feel awkward. <laughs> so give it up. Give up that worry that you're gonna be out of your depths and not know exactly what to do. Because that's the fluid place where the human mind wakes up. That's the place of novelty. Where the universe and your 
moment becomes a little more interesting because you were there. Because you decided to go outside of your normal way of being and thinking and doing. And as a result, you got to play <laughs> with creation. There's lots of different ways to be exploring the world and trying new things. And some ways are noisy and wasteful, damaging to the planet, sometimes to the vibe. And I'm going to say right now, those of you that have hobbies that involve extremely loud vehicles, I have a message to you from the ecosystem. Your noise is affecting things in a way that is going to adversely affect your ability to survive. The pollinators of this earth require significant periods of silence, of natural sounds only. And when your loud vehicle comes ripping through a natural place where there might be flowers, those pollinators will freeze. The bees, in particular, will freeze, and their numbers are being adversely affected by your noisy hobbies. And that's not cool. Humans don't have a right to ruin the ecosystem. We don't have a right. to be unkind to our world. We have a right to be here, to experience life, but not at the expense of our huge spaceship that we're living in. And what makes it tip is more complicated than we think about in our normal daily lives. And some of the devices we've come up with upset the balance more than others. And when it comes to the noisy toys, we have to stop. We have to get off that whole trip. The rest of nature is kind of pissed at us. Have you not noticed? And if you don't want Mother Nature to bite back with drought and storms and floods, if you want the Earth to be a loving mother, you gotta stop biting the nipple. That's precisely what the human race has a tendency to do. We're kind of a tough child, if you think about it. We're kind of noisy and messy. And we don't really care about the rest of the species on the planet as long as we get what we want, what we desire. I think we can do better, don't you? I think we can, as a member of a community, learn the effects so that we can restore the damage. Damage that we cause. And we're gonna have to fix. The question is not whether we can fix it. There's no point in that question. Because we have to fix If we wish our beauty to continue in this universe, the human species exploring all the possibilities, we have to 
the food. Healthy food. And that food comes from the soil. We have to breathe, and that comes from the air. We have to drink. And that comes from the rain. We have to take care of all these things. So the ecosystem will be balanced. Not just in a way that serves humanity. Monoculture, agriculture has demonstrated its horrific effects in this world. We need to learn how to garden in a different way. We need to be leaving the soil better than when we found it. Imagine that. You plant a garden, you get some vegetables out of it. Yeah, you could have bought them at the store, but you know where these came from. You know they're happy. You've been talking to that plant and singing to it, hanging crystals over it, if you may. And praying, you know, that this will grow and thanking the earth as you do it. You get two tomatoes or 200. And you've done something good for your life, right? Well, imagine in that process, you weren't just taking from the earth, literally and metaphorically. What if your garden gave back? Gave back to the bees? What if it gave back to the soil in terms of not just nitrogen, but the, all the living things that are necessary for healthy loam? Loam is soil that is rich in life. Worm castings have become a fascination for many, including me. And the evidence in my garden is pretty darn robust, to say the least. And it wasn't that hard, and it's not that gross. It doesn't even smell that bad, really. You should wash your hands after you dig in there, but man, you dig into those worm castings and put them in the base of your plants, knowing that this is exactly what that soil required, and that soil will populate with all the living things that are necessary. What if we weren't just users of the garden, we were creators of the garden? What if the ecosystem wasn't just some place that we visited, but a place that we participate in as a steward of our world? to take responsibility for what we need, which includes the needs of others, the countless other species, not just the other human. Although that would be a pretty good start for people to be nicer to each other. It would be a good start for people to laugh together and play together to nurture the positive human emotions and not the negative. It seems to me that when people are truly happy, they make good choices. And they see the world through the eyes of abundance and constructive thought. You live better when you're happy. Because you want it to keep going. When you're miserable, you wish it was over. What if you were glad to be here? What if you made a choice to look for the reasons why you love being alive. And what if that feeling led you to creative answers to how to make that expand, that feeling of happiness, that feeling of well-being, 
power and creativity. What if you just rode the wave of joy to the right mind, to be right-minded, is evident by thy fruits you shall know the good life. Life together and construct a harmony with one's ecosystem. Why not? I think those two words are the start of all great adventures. Large and small. Yes, there are small great adventures. And I have to go to the North Pole to experience something astounding it's about your attitude your attitude in the inception of an idea that sounds like fun an idea and when you think about it you get kind of a warm fuzzy. You're like, that'd be cool. You know, I always wanted to. Wouldn't that be neat? You know, that's the place of wonder. That's the inner child. And so much of what we spend our time on in the modern fancy world with all of our technology is not nearly as much fun as something stupid like this. I mean, this is pointless. <laughs> but it really does have a point. Conquistadors of the useless is who we really are. That's when an adventure persona which I believe is within everyone. Okay, it's pretty deep, buried down for some, but... Behind the fear is the fascination. Behind the fear is the creativity, the insights, On the other side of the thoughts that fear generates is the real you, the real me, the real human being underneath stereotypical thoughts, common words, phrases, and actions. That's not life, that's just subsisting. We're not just meant to do that. And we can tell when we run out of energy and our life feels pointless. And we wonder why we're here. You don't wonder that when you live in your best life. Which is probably a lot weirder and less comfortable than <laughs> you might expect. Go with it. Go with the odd. Go with what your dancing in the shower self wants to do. Because you're gonna need that when times are harder. You're gonna need to remember that that's who you are. You're gonna need to know 
there's so much more than the moment you're in. When life sucks, you need to remember where you're going. How are you going to dream your way out of suckage? Well, you have to remember the opposite. You're going to have to remember those times you decided you just... What the hell, man? That one. That feeling. Not like, this is crazy, I kind of half hope I die because I'm really sick of this world. That's not the extreme sort of lifestyle that I condone. It's the opposite. Celebration of life in the hopes that not only can you do this in this moment, but you can do it repeatedly. So that you can enjoy every moment fully. So you can say, I did that. I got that badge of honor. <laughs> and it's only you that assigns that honor. It's something that you believe in is a cool thing to do. Something that's valuable to you. It doesn't even matter if it's valuable to others. Because people will call you nuts no matter what you do. So you might as well do you, you know, do your version of fun. Let's give people the freedom to be a little bit weird. Let's not judge them. Let's not be harsh in our perspective of what is right and what is wrong. What if you just decided to let them be? All of them. And I get it. Some people not aren't really doing a great job of playing well with others. And their racket needs to come to an end. Don't fuel it. Don't become part of it. Notice it and create an opposite experience. When you're in your right mind, sometimes that mind says run. Sometimes it says plant a garden. Sometimes that mind says paint a painting. Or ask that one out. Or speak your truth. Or sing your song. Write that poem. If we stop judging each other, the creativity will flow. Not just creativity that's non-functional, but the kind that makes the world better. Inventions that solve problems. That's what it's all about, isn't it? We expand our minds so that we can make the world a better place. Don't you want to make the world a better place? I do. I try. I'll keep trying. For all of eternity what my love requires of me.
these guys work with these guys <laughs> and those guys to create air. If we don't have plants, the O2 on this planet will diminish and we've diminished the number of plants, particularly the number of flowering plants. And that is in large part by the fact that we have changed the structure of the world. We've built lots of things that are not living. And these guys have suffered because they don't have anything to eat. Because we're not planting flowers, we're planting grass. And our planet needs more than just grasses. It's not so hard to get these guys going. You can read up it on, on the internet, read up on how to do it, where to do it, what the secrets are. It's out there, man. YouTube will teach us how to heal our Earth. And if we do it right, 10, 15 years, this planet could look very, very, very different. If we turn that back into that, so that we're growing our food in complex environments that are smart and rejuvenating the food by rejuvenating the soil. Bean plants have actually tremendous capability to bump up the nitrogen. The nitrogen fixing modules do their job. And if you let it be fallow, you let all the different plants grow in a wild way, you end up with an ecosystem that has, uh, has a sustainability to it built in. So, the linchpin is the bees. Go get you some bees, go plant you some flowers. Don't kill them. <laughs> and stop spraying things that do. We need those bees. Apparently, those bees need us.